Recently, God reminded me that He knows our needs long before we do. Let me tell you the story. A few days ago, well, a few days ago from the time of filming this video, um, I put out a tw- put out a tweet, and I in it I had. Um, I was responding to some things going on in the Southern Baptist Convention, and if you don't know anything about me, I'd spent many years in the SBC, uh, pastored in the SBC. Um, I'm now a member of a non-denominational church, but um, uh, up until 2018, I was always part of the SBC. And so, and I'm an alumnus from there. I have two degrees from Southwestern Seminary. Um, so I have a history and, and you know, and, and ties to the SBC. But some things have been going on recently that I put out a tweet and in response to, and in this tweet, um, I, I said that I was praying for Paige Patterson and his spiritual growth and his role in the, you know, in the gospel ministry. I was praying for Southwestern Seminary as they move forward, and I was praying for all Southern Baptists um, that they would you know, rediscover God's grace and love and be unified in, in Christ. Um, it was a little bit shorter than that because of the number of character limits, but that was what I was saying. That's what I said. And, you know, I stand by that. I wasn't endorsing anything anybody had said. I wasn't, you know, standing up behind anybody and, you know, lifting them up uh, or recommending them. I was simply, you know, you know, trying to indicate that my focus was on and my hope for the convention was that the gospel would once again be what matters, that Christ would be lifted up and he would be exalted. And that the members of the SBC in leadership and not in leadership would re- would engage would would experience a spiritual renewal, a spiritual growth, um, and they would draw closer to Christ. That that's my prayer, and I stand by it. But the next morning, I woke up and there were some responses to the to the tweet that um, I looked at one of the uh, profile of one of the responders, and this individual claimed or seemed to claim to be a Christian. But this person and other and another had mocked me. You know, that's Christian of them. Um, they mocked me, mischaracterized me, and ridiculed me. Um, kind of the antithesis of what I was praying for amongst other Baptists. You know, um, but it, it hurt. You know, I know I'm not supposed to take it personally and and be thick skinned, right? But in you know, all honesty, it hurt. Um, so I went to work that morning, not feeling, you know, not, you know, kind of sad, not depressed, but you know, let down, let down by supposed Christians being anything but. Um, and I'm not saying I'm perfect; I'm not, but this hurt me. So I was walking into the church that where I work, and um, you know, I was carrying my phone, kind of like this, you know, and. I saw out of the corner of my eye that there was a white glow from the phone, so I was curious what app did I just accidentally open? I didn't mean to open up any app. Well, I looked down and it was Uversion. I just happened to open Uversion. And this is where it gets interesting, at least in my opinion. Um, the verse for that day related directly to what I was feeling. Now, I don't know when the people at Uversion pick their verses for each day, but I'm going to guess it's, you know, at least days ahead of time. I don't see them sitting there every day saying tomorrow's is, so I think it's days, maybe weeks, maybe months, could be a year, I don't know. Oh, pardon me. It could be a year, I don't know. Um, but long in advance, they had picked the verse for that day, and that verse happened to directly relate to exactly what I was feeling and what I was and what I was doing with the twi- with Twitter and with my tweet. And God used the people at Uversion to predetermine and preset what I needed so I could be encouraged in God. It wasn't about me. It was It's God using people to use God's word to speak to me about God to bring me closer to God. For God's glory. That is what it's about. But the verse for that day was Romans 8.31. 
8.31. Romans 8.31. That was it. Just one verse. And that verse encouraged me. And we're going to get to it in a minute. Because I actually read more than that verse. But I actually tweeted out via Instagram because I, I share, I take images frequently and of, of the verses I'm reading every day. And um, I'll tweet out an image of it. Well, I tweeted out an image of that verse. And, well, uh, that verse and a few others. Um, and I'm not saying this caused anything or, but it's coincidental that after I had tweeted out that image of this verse and a couple others, no more responses or mocking of that tweet. Could be pure coincidence. I'm open to that. But I'm also thinking that maybe God used that. Maybe God, um, Show people that it's, that they shouldn't mock others who are trying to be incompassionate. But I don't know. I, I, I want to lean toward coincidence on that, but I don't know. But I read that verse and was like, wow. God knew I needed that before I did. Weeks before I even planned the tweet, God knew I'm going to have that tweet. I'm going to have that response and I'm going to feel the feelings I was feeling. And wanted to encourage me. So today we're going to be looking at Romans 8. We're going to be looking at 31 through 37. So, oops, I'm highlighting here. Uh, 31 through 37, where is it? So let me read it to you and then we'll kind of cover it a little, a little bit. And um, let me go ahead and put it on the screen for you. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Pardon me. Pardon me. Hmm. Something stuck in my throat. It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You know, that's, these words were so encouraging to me. I felt let down by Christians. I felt hurt by people claiming to be Christ followers who were it, apparently in the name of Jesus, mocking someone who simply wanted to show compassion, who simply wanted to pray for the gospel to be elevated, wasn't endorsing anything except the gospel, and that's worth mocking, apparently, by the standards of some. But that's between them and God. I shouldn't be hurt by it, God is saying. Don't be stressed out by it. Don't be bothered by it. People will be people. They will be mean. They will be cruel. Even the Christians will be cruel and vicious and mean. I mean, the people of God, you know, the Jews, the people of God who are supposed to have faith in Him, who are waiting for the Messiah, when Messiah came, said, hang Him on a tree. Um, you know, if the people looking forward to Messiah wanted to hang Messiah on a tree because they rejected him. Why should I think that I'm any more exempt from being mocked by even Christians? But it's not about me versus other Christians. It's not about me versus anybody else. It's about my relationship with God. It's about your relationship with God between you and him and my relationship between me and God. It's That's what I need to focus on. I need to focus on my relationship with him. And God in this passage was saying to me, that he loves me and that when I feel let down that I shouldn't be hurt. Instead, I should do what I was praying others would experience, greater compassion, love. 
If something, if somebody does something wrong, they should be held accountable. But we should not be done out of anger or cruelty or wrath on our part. We should be known for our love. And I need to show love. But I, when people came at me, what God was saying was this. People will hurt you. So rest in me. Find your rest in me. He was saying, when you do something that is right, when you show compassion, when you show love, and people come after you, ignore them. And just find your rest in me. Have you been experiencing what I felt that day? I don't know. Um, maybe, you know, one or two of you who watch this, um, maybe you have. Maybe you've been doing the right thing and you felt let down by others. Don't worry about them. If you're doing what God wants, if you're trying to exalt the gospel of Jesus Christ, exalt Jesus' name, if you're trying to lift him up, don't worry about the mockers and the ridiculers and the haters and the trolls. Ignore them. Ignore them. I know that's hard to do sometimes, but the way, what, what encouraged me that day was, and what moved me from hurt to, use the age, healing, um, hurt to happiness, wasn't simply getting over it. it. Wasn't simply forgetting the other person. It wasn't simply ignoring them. What helped me was I turned to God. So I shifted my focus from them to my risen Savior. And I said, God, I'm going to come to you because I can't, I can try to ignore them, but it's, I, I won't be successful. But if I focus on you, God, whatever they say will be silenced. Well, they may be still, you know, running their mouths, but I won't hear them because I'm hearing your voice, God. That is what God was reminding me of. I need to just rest in Him. So, as you go about your life, and as you go about trying to help others, trying to promote the gospel, trying to share Jesus, trying to live out the love of Christ to those around you, and trying to extol Jesus and glorify God. As you go about doing that, you will have people that will come against you, even people that claim to be Christians. They will act very anti-Christian. Ignore them if you can, but you're going to find that hard. So, Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Go to God. Rest in Him. He's the one that's going to judge you. Don't let the world do it. Look to Him. For He is a judge. And Jesus is intercessor. Turn to God. Find rest. In him. God bless. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then be sure and click like and subscribe, and then hit that little bell button to stay updated with new videos. And then head on over to my Patreon page, where with your help, I can make better quality videos, I can make more videos, and together we can go on this journey of life. God bless.